Today we're working on lesson 22.4. You're going to be able to choose whatever method you want to solve these quadratics. So you can factor, you can just use quadratic formula if you want. Um, as long as you have some work showing. The only thing I'm not going to accept is if you just go into Desmos. So you can't just plug in the equation into Desmos and look at the graph. Like, yes, during a test, go ahead and do that so you can check your answer. But I am going to require work because when you get to your state test, when you get to ACT, SAT, all those tests that you have to take, you're not allowed to use Desmos. So you have to know how to do this without Desmos. And quadratic formula stuff is 100% going to be on tests that you see when you're taking all your different state tests over the next few years. So this is why I want to make sure you know how to do it. Um, as we've learned, there's multiple ways to solve quadratics. So whatever way you like, you can do. Okay, we're going to start with example 1a. This one is, I think there's only one example actually. Uh, it's just a quadratic and it's going to say solve. The equation is x squared plus 7x plus 6 equals 0. Okay, me personally, when I see this, I know that factoring is going to be the fastest thing to do here. So me personally, I would factor. We're going to practice using factoring for this one. We're also going to practice using the quadratic formula for this one, just so you can see. Okay, this is just review from the last chapter. When we factor and there's a 1 in front, so when there's no number there, there's really a 1. This is where you figure out what multiplies together to be your C value, but what adds to be the B value. Hopefully this is vaguely coming back to you. What multiplies to be 6, but adds to be 7. Hopefully real fast you think of that as 6 and 1. When there's a 1 in front, this is not the dropping stuff down and putting the 2 in between. That's not this way. If there's a 1 in front, this is just you split up your x. And then this is a positive 6 and a positive 1. So you just put it in as plus 6 and plus 1. Okay, normally I can just do this step in my head, but I'm going to write it out. So you take each factor and set it equal to 0. So x plus 6 equals 0, and then x plus 1 equals 0. Again, probably you should be able to do this in your head. I'm going to show the work just in case, though. So I'm going to solve this first one. Subtract 6 from both sides, and I get x equals negative 6. There's one of the solutions. For the other solution, just going to subtract 1 from both sides, and I get x is negative 1. Okay, so for me personally, I would have factored, because I know I can split up that into two factors and solve them really, really fast. Okay, the other way we've been working on, and most people I know prefer quadratic formula, so we're going to practice this with the quadratic formula. The nice thing is quadratic formula always works. Factoring is not always going to work. Not every single quadratic equation can be factored. So eventually you're going to have to do quadratic formula anyhow. Oops. So we're going to do the same question, but this time we're going to use the quadratic formula. Hopefully you have that memorized in your head from the song. X is equal to negative b plus or minus, hopefully you're singing it in your head, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so we're going to take that same equation that we just used. So we're going to use x squared plus 7x plus 6. I just want to show you that you're going to get the same answer still. So it's already in standard form. Go ahead and list out what A, B, and C all stand for. A 
A is really a 1, B is 7, and C is 6. Okay, the equation is X equals negative B, so negative 7 plus or minus Okay, b squared, b is 7, 7 times 7 is 49, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a, 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, go ahead and simplify what's underneath the radical sign, so bring down negative 7 and your plus or minus. Bring down the radical sign. What's underneath the radical? Put that into your calculator. Forty-nine minus four times one. Oops. Forty-nine minus four times one times six is twenty-five. All over two. Okay. Square root of twenty-five is twenty-five a perfect square? Yes, and if you're not sure, put it into your calculator. Put in square root of 25 and see if you get a nice pretty whole number. If you do, then we need to finish this. If you don't, if you get a decimal, you can just stop. This is the final answer then. But there is a square root of 25. So negative 7 plus or minus, okay, the square root of 25 is 5. So that's where I'm getting this 5 from. I'm doing square root of 25 is 5 and then it's all over 2. So square root of 25 is 5. Okay, now this is going to be two separate problems because I have to do negative 7 plus 5 and then I have to do negative 7 minus 5. So I'm going to separate it into two different problems. The first problem I'll do negative 7 plus 5 and then over 2. Negative 7 plus 5 over 2. Negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So I did negative 7 plus 5. Now I'm going to do negative 7 minus 5 over 2. Negative 7 minus 5 is negative 12. Divided by 2 is negative 6. So the solutions are negative 1 and negative 6, which is also what we got here. Negative 1 and negative 6. So again, I don't care which way you do it. How, whatever makes sense to you. I personally would have factored just because I know it would be shorter, less work. But quadratic formula will always, always, always work. Questions on what I did here? How many of you think you prefer the factoring on that one? How many of you still prefer quadratic formula? Okay. Okay, let's try another one. Three x squared minus two x minus five equals zero. Okay, this is the one uh, we're going to factor, but this is the one when there's a no number in front. So this is the one that a lot of you guys were getting confused with. So I'm going to go through this slowly. First, I'm going to factor it. So when there is an a value, this is where you figure out what multiplies to be a times c. 3 times negative 5. So what's going to multiply to be negative 15, but adds to be the b value. Hopefully this sounds vaguely familiar. You're figuring out two numbers that multiply to be 3 times negative 5 and add to be negative 2. Bless you. Okay, so think of two numbers that multiply to be 15, or negative 15, but they add to be negative 2. It's going to be a combination with a 3 and a 5. 
They have to multiply by negative, so that means one of those has to be negative. I need to end up with a negative, so the bigger number needs to be negative. Okay, so that means I'm going to end up with a positive 3x in a second and a minus 5x in a second. Okay, when there's a number in front, this is the one where we drop down the first number and we leave some space and then you drop down that last number. Leave space because you're going to put two numbers down here. So we're going to put down a positive 3x and a negative 5x, but we have to figure out which one goes where. So figure out which one makes sense to be next to the 3 and which one makes sense to be next to this 5. Hopefully you realize the 3 and the 3 should go together and the 5 and the 5 should go together. So go ahead and put your plus 3x first and then your minus 5x second. Because now we're going to lump these two and these two. Hopefully this is all vaguely coming back to you. Okay, this is where I look for the greatest common factor for 3x squared and 3x. So for both of them, I can pull out a 3. I can also pull out the letter x. So for 3x squared, if I pulled out a 3 and I pulled out one of the x's, I still have one x left over. If I had 3x's and I pulled out 3x's, it's just a 1 left over. And if you do distributive property, you can double check. 3x times x is 3x squared, and then 3x times 1 is 3x. Okay, now we'll do the second two. They both share a minus sign and they both share the number 5, so bring out a minus 5. I pulled out the negative 5, so I still have an x left. I pulled out a negative 5, so just put down plus 1. And then if you do distributive property, just to check, negative 5 times x is negative 5x, negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. These two should be the same exact factor if you did it correctly, so bring down that factor. The other numbers are the ones that came in front, this 3x and this minus 5. So 3x minus 5 is the other factor. And then set this equal to 0. And now you just take both of these factors and set them equal to 0 and solve those. 3x minus 5 equals 0. And then x plus 1 equals 0. Okay, then we're just solving those. So we've done this a thousand times this year. Add 5 to both sides. And then divide by 3. x is 5 thirds. And this side, subtract 1, and x is negative 1. Okay, so for a question like this, I probably would not factor personally, just because this is a whole lot of work, and I know that doing the quadratic formula, I usually can do that a little more quickly. It's still going to be a lot of work, but I feel like it's not this much work. Okay, so we're going to do this question again, but we're going to use quadratic formula this time. So the equation was 3x squared minus 2x minus 5. Your a value is 3, your b value is negative 2, your c value is negative 5. Okay, start singing the song in your head x is equal to negative b, negative, negative 2. So the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, negative 2 squared, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Minus 4ac all over 2 a's. 2 a's, 2 times 3, 2 times 3 is 6. Okay. 
x is equal to 2 plus or minus. Okay, grab your calculator now and do 4 minus 4 times 3 times negative 5. 4 minus 4 times 3 times negative 5. And you get 64 all over 6. Okay, can I figure out the square root of 64? If you're not sure, put it in your calculator. So plug in square root of 64. Brody, bring it up. Put it on my desk. Are you kidding me? So I'm going to get 2 plus or minus. Leave it there. Okay, square root of 64 is what? What number times itself is 64? And then all over 6. Okay, go ahead and finish that. Do 2 plus 8 over 6. And then 2 minus 8 over 6. And then just finish it. Just don't leave it like this, like don't circle this, because I want to make sure you finish it. 2 plus 8 over 6, that is 10 over 6, which is 5 fourths. 2 minus 8 is negative 6 over 6, which is negative 1. Okay, so you should have ended up with 5 over 4. No, not 5 over 4. Where did I get a 4 from? 5 over 3, sorry, let's see, 5 over 3 and negative 1, which is what we got up here to. So again, I don't care which one you solve it, and when it's a test, I probably would put it in Desmos. I would look, I would chat, I'd type this in and look at where the, it's going to be a U-shaped graph because it has an X squared on it, so it's a parabola and just touch on Desmos and see where it hits. It should hit at 5 thirds and negative 1. But again, on your test, you also have to show work. So just maybe do that as like a second thing just to check your answer. Okay, questions on that one. How many of you probably would have factored for this one? Maybe a handful. How many of you would have probably used quadratic formula? Okay. Okay, now for the rest of the time, you guys are going to be doing practice questions with other people. So we'll do it one at a time. When do we, today is 9.04. Okay, we probably only have time to do one or two, and then we'll finish the last two on Monday and do the exit ticket on Monday. Okay, for these ones, if you do get a radical that you can't finish, so like we got square root of 64, which we could finish, but if you end up with like square root of 65 or something that's irrational, I do want you for these ones, I want you to round to two decimal spots. Yeah, so to your hundredths. So if you get a question where you end up with a radical eight, go ahead and put it in your calculator and round it. Okay, question one. Nine X squared minus 100 equals zero. Okay, go ahead and solve this however you want, as long as you have some work showing. So I notice that these are both perfect squares. So this is 3x times 3x is 9x squared. And then 10 times 10 is 100. And then there's a minus sign in between them. So it's going to be 3x plus 10 times 3x minus 10. And I'm going to set them both equal to 0. Okay, your two answers are plus and minus 10 thirds. How many people did get that at least? How many of you used quadratic formula? Okay. So again, I don't care which way you use it. Um, on Monday, we will finish a few more of these on our own, and then we'll do an exit ticket.
Um, some of you guys still owe me work. Please check power schools. All your work is due by next Thursday.